Hello everyone. Today we are here with a new topic which is lateral inhibition. This is a topic of nervous system. Uh, so you might get some short questions in your examination. This is very important. So let's see what is lat lateral inhibition and what are uses of lateral inhibition in physiology, right? This is a very small topic so you have to just understand the concept and accordingly then you will be getting the understanding of your uses in physiology right. So what is lateral inhibition? As name shows laterally something to be inhibited right. So the definition is lateral inhibition is a CNS process whereby application of a stimulus to the center of receptive field it excites a neuron. We know that a stimulus can excite a neuron. That's that's what we are talking about here. But here we are talking about that if when we apply a stimulus to center of some area which is called receptive field, it will excite a neuron. But that stimulus applied near the edge inhibit it. Okay. For example, you can see in the image that this brown area is basically the area where we have given a stimulus. Fine. So, it will be exciting one neuron which is connected to that, okay. But it will also stimulate some other neuron which are nearby, fine. So, the lateral inhibition is basically the inhibition of the surrounding neurons so that we can recognize the stimulus is applied to which area concisely, fine. So, first of all to understand this topic we should be knowing what is receptive field. So, let's see that. Receptive field is a region on our skin, on our periphery, okay. So, the region in which sensory, the region in sensory periphery within which the stimuli can influence the electrical activity of sensory cells. Basically, in a simple understanding, a region, when, when we apply a stimulus to that region, that will be the connected neurons will be stimulated. That's what we are saying here. So, it provides a description of the location at which sensory stimulus must be presented in order to elicit a response. If you can see in the image that there is some area designated or connected to one afferent neuron. Okay, this so this is called sensory unit. Like motor unit, the motor neuron supplied with the receptive, uh, receptive endings, now endings. Uh, receptive muscle fibers. So, the muscle fibers supplied by motor fiber, motor uh, efferent is called motor unit. So, here sensory unit, this much is sensory unit. So, this area which is supplied with that afferent neuron, sensory neuron, okay. So, receptive field is this region, wherever we will stimulate in this area, the stimulus obviously, the information will be carried out by that afferent neuron, the sensory neuron, okay. If we are stimulating uh, outside this boundary, then this sensory neuron will not be stimulated. That's what we are saying here. But if we give a stimulus, for example, this is a skin, okay, you are touching with the finger here. So, it doesn't mean that you are only limited to this area. It can be possible that you are stimulating this area, but you are also stimulating some periphery neurons. Fine. So, what is basically lateral inhibition is to carry this information precisely and strongly, these periphery, peripheral neurons uh, should not be stimulated. Okay. So, wherever our finger is to touch that area, so most of these neurons will be stimulated and the less stimulated neurons should be inhibited so that we can perceive the stimulus strongly. Fine. Let's see what it means. So, how it happens? How basically periphery neurons, they can be inhibited so that we can get a stronger stimulus on one neuron, which is being stimulated the most. Fine. So, as you can see in the image, there are some peripheral neurons, which here you can see these are the action potentials shown. So, this is the area of stimulation where we have a largest strongest action potential you can see the firing rate here on periphery neurons is very less so what we want is the stimulus will be strong we can perceive that stimulus strongly if only this 
sensory unit this sensory neuron will be stimulated alone and other neurons on periphery should be inhibited how it occur basically so the lateral inhibition occurs because of a sensory interneurons present in between sensory afferent neurons for example this is the afferent neurons which is stimulated you can see here there are some it 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 is also connected with as you can see the darker interneurons which is going to inhibit the periphery neurons here this neuron when stimulated it's going to stimulate some interneuron on both side these interneuron when stimulated they inhibit these surrounding neurons this minus sign is showing inhibition so when sensory neuron is stimulated the other neurons are inhibited leading to as you can see the this is the output so sensory neuron stimulated we have high output of sensory neuron and uh, peripheral neuron stimulated we have because of these interneurons we don't have output on peripheral neurons so that's why we can say here that this center of peripheral receptive field the center of receptive field is stimulated and peripheral neurons are inhibited so laterally the sensory neuron is inhibiting the lateral neurons this is called lateral inhibition okay so the final output is if you prick anything or you touch anything to a part of skin then this receptive field the center one have the area of excitation and peripheral part have area of inhibition that's what we are saying here now what is use of this in physiology so this is being used in uh, some uh, systems so if you get uh, this question in exam what to perform is you have to always write the applied aspect so lateral inhibition is being used in visual inhibition where horizontal cells are present which inhibit the road and cone cells to improve the contrast and sharpness in the visual response okay tactile inhibition you can explain via two point discrimination because we can demarcate the receptive field area because of lateral inhibition if we touch a area only that receptive field demarcation occur and we can perceive that in cerebral cortex okay Now, auditory inhibition basically high frequency sounds are inhibited so that we can basically more clearly uh, increase our awareness toward the sound quality because if we mix up all frequency sounds we can't hear it properly if the high frequency sounds are inhibited we can we can hear it properly the sound awareness okay so that's what about lateral inhibition and its uses in physiology thanks for watching